close place, she would say, in the place of anybody else. And she would then start going in the direction of Kant. For Kant, in the comments we just wrote, what we say about in the place of anybody else, they couldn't put himself in the Yeah, could not, could not, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and inability, an inability to think is the inability to, in Kant's terms, enlarge your mind. And to enlarge your mind is to use your imagination and to be able to see something from a variety of perspectives. What if you're subservient? Hmm? What if you're subservient? What if you like if you're receiving more <coughs> that, 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 that was his problem. Right? That's that's right. That's true. But this is very interesting because it's not, it's not just about his inability to go in someone else's position, it's also that he is totally inhabited by Yeah, but so why not? The fear is the fear, I just did what they told me. Yeah. So he's in a kind of sense of totally empty yeah, exactly. subject. That's why, that's why uh, the internalized can be disassociated. Mm -hmm. For however much is internalized from the act can be disassociated. Yeah, yeah, it, they, that's why, that's why the, uh, the consequence of Aaron's reflections are <coughs> uh, very often misunderstood. Uh, on the one hand, people accuse her of uh, exculpating. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, that means that uh, anybody would have done the same thing uh, mm -hmm. under similar conditions. Not anyway, she would say. She identified um, the, process, the prosecution identified those who were heroes, that is, who chose, in, in Aaron's words, to die 1,000 deaths uh, instead of uh, obeying uh, that regime, not only victims, but also uh, potentially non victims, but that, that also risked their lives. But if you have a moral philosophy, that moral philosophy cannot expect humans to be heroes, whichever definition. Exceptions. So, uh, moral philosophy is a moral philosophy that should be applied uh, to most of us, to everybody. So, in a way, the consequence is not to exculpate Eichmann, but to make sure that we uh, that we, we learn from the experiences that we ought not to accept the creation of the same conditions. I don't want to get into too controversial, but. Uh, because of its very contemporary issues, but in my opinion, um, one of the most important moral problems in contemporary warfare, in the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, <coughs> in, the, in the use of drones, for example, now, is uh, that although we cannot say that American society is a society that is dominated by, by uh, the totalitarian logic that uh, dominated uh, Nazi Germany in that particular uh, period, uh, we do create <coughs> uh, circumstances in the, particularly because of the, the need to weigh orders, but there are some circumstances even more so <coughs> that, uh, that, uh, that create a, very, a widespread um, uh, experience of uh, banality. Uh, you can just see, I invite you, if you want a research of this, I just invite you to search, to do some research about the stories that, being, that are coming from, <coughs> from the use of drones uh, in, uh, in contemporary warfare and the decision making that is involved. It was just in the early times of the a very good story about that. Uh, and, and once... <coughs> Sunday. Hmm? Sunday. On Sunday. Um, about, you know, a decision made in Austin and you know, that, you know, sort of children killed, uh, etc. Uh, and <coughs> Uh, you see the point, but uh, even more clearly, so we saw the point once I was teaching uh, a, um, a course on, uh, I don't remember exactly how it was, but we were reading Icon in Jerusalem, and, uh, and, and CNN, weirdly so, because this is clearly what happens here is that the appearances 